there's this really cool idea floating around uh, English studies, composition studies now that is, uh, it's called student capacity. And it's, uh, it, in a nutshell, boiled down to its, you know, basic elements, it's, let's not complain too much about what students can't do. Let's focus on what they can do and help them figure out how to do those things even more and better. Okay, and so in that, um, in that vein, uh, I believe in your capacity to be inspired to find a, uh, a topic for the research essay from just about anywhere. Okay, so uh, one of the things that you're meant to do this week, um, probably the most important thing that, that I'm asking you to do is to find potential topics and ultimately lock into one sooner rather than later. So what I have here are, uh, you know, a, a list of ongoing potential research essay topics. This is a Padlet. It's going to ask me for access. Okay, there we go. Um, so what you'll do when you get to this part, I just posted a couple here, um, local stories about the Maslin Museum and about a panel that was held at Glen Oak High School. Um, just double click and you write your title and you insert your link. Okay, so I want to see what sources you find, what ideas you have uh, about potential topics. And it doesn't, you don't have to post uh, a topic that you're, you're absolutely going to do, but in the process of your venturing out online, maybe even in the world, and you know, seeking inspiration for your research essay topic, you'll share uh, some ideas that you had. They don't have to be essays that you're going to write, but essays that you know, maybe someone else could. Maybe you'll be, you'll be the inspiration for somebody else. That's my nice. Uh, that's that's the nice uh, uh, goal that I have in mind. We'll see how well it pans out. So, lots of ways to be inspired. Okay, and here are just a, a few now. You all hopefully know what this looks like. This is the uh, Stark State Digital Library's website. Hopefully you know, you go to the list of databases. You have to log in if you're off campus, of course. Um, Academic Search Complete is by far my favorite. I'm not gonna walk you through this uh, because you should learn all that stuff in College Comp. But uh, if you're looking for you know straight up academic, reliable, peer reviewed, high quality, super credible sources, then that is, uh, you know, that's one of your uh, best bets is to go to the Stark State um, College Digital Library. And, uh, you know, it, those, those databases, um, you know, your, your tuition, so to speak, pays for them. I use a lot of figure quotes. I don't do that in real life at all. I wonder what, that, what that's about. I don't use figure quotes ever. <laughs> my wife would be very, very curious as to know why I do that on my screencast so often. Um, okay, so this list should look familiar to you as well at least if you had me last semester. And if, uh, any, you know, again, if there's ever anything I can help clear up or remind you of, please let me. This is a list of uh, online sources worth visiting is what I've titled it as. Uh, these are all high quality paid journalists um, that will help you in your, in, your, in your search for a topic. So the New York Times, the Atlantic, the New Yorker, the Guardian, the New Republic, Business Week, Rolling Stone, Atlas Obscura, I really like. Vanity Fair, Guernica, The Believer's Good, um, Interview Magazine, Lucky Peach is about food, Slate is mostly about politics, Vice is all, sort of, it's all over the place, 538 is data, Quartz.com is nice, The Verge, I'll talk more about uh, in a little bit, New York Review of Books. Okay, you don't need me to read this list off to you, but stay on this list as much as you're able, or if there's something that I should be, consider adding to this list, this list takes me a long time. I'm constantly reviewing it and updating it and um, making sure that it's what it, you know, it, it represents the, the, the best of what's out there. Uh, so click around on these, go to see what are, what, what are the front page stories, see what's, uh, you know, which headlines are being clicked on the most or read the most or commented on the most. And I didn't even put the local papers in here. I guess I could. I had that idea. Let's see if it's any good. You can't wrap. You can find stories that are affecting us as members of this community. I mean, there are plenty. There's one in the news today as I'm writing this that affected the school district my kids go to. Uh, so you are, oh, how dare I spell Maslin wrong? Or independent for that matter. Um, how dare I spell? Oh, autocorrect makes us all so lazy, doesn't it? All right, so um, IndianLine.com. Those the websites themselves are <laughs> they're challenging to navigate. Let's say. Um, oh, let me go back over here just for one more second. Uh, anyway, 
there, you should be able to find a topic somewhere on this list. If you're, if you just say, okay, I'm for an hour, I'm going to click around on the internet and I'm going to see what sorts of, you know, uh, topics are out there in the world right now. Something's going to jump out at you. I, I, I guarantee it. And if it doesn't, then you need to email me a paragraph about like a get to know you sort of, uh, with a sort of get to know you agenda. Here's what I'm interested in. Here's what I like to do in my spare time. And I will find you articles that will hopefully springboard you to productive topics. Okay. Uh, so wander off this list at your own risk. That's to say no more, what brainy quotes.com or no more, uh, you know, listicles, the ones, you know, uh, top 10 things you didn't know about cyberbullying. Uh, no, just no. <laughs> it's going to come so far out of your grade uh, if those things actually make their way to well, any of your assignments, but especially your final job. Uh, so wander off that list or at least get a, get approval from me. Uh, is this a good source or not? Is this an, uh, an acceptable web website or not? No, I did not mean to repost. Oh, some of these red lines, I think. Um, okay, so more to the student capacity thing. You're allowed to be inspired by, by movies. Now, these are all sort of movies that are connected to technology in some way, but, you know... Uh, or TV shows, I guess I, I just I, I I'm a bit more of a movie person, but you know we all binge everything on Netflix, right? Or at least if you're digital Sabbath essays, or if you believe <laughs> many of us do. Uh, so if there's something that you're watching that is maybe speaking to a technological concern of our time, awesome. Please write about it. All right. Uh, these are just movies that I was thinking about that have sort of inspired me to think about tech issues. There's this incredible movie called Her, um, 2001: A Space Odyssey, which is by everybody's favorite director Stanley Kubrick. Uh, Primer is a really cool time travel movie uh, that is almost incomprehensible at times. Uh, and that's uh, said by someone who's seen it more than a few times and really wants to figure it out and still quite can't. Uh, so check out Primer if you get a chance. Shane Carruthy also has uh, another movie. He has a movie called Upstream Color that's a little bit technologically based, but not as much as Primer. Uh, Ex Machina uh, was really good. Um, there's another uh, movie by that director coming out soon called Annihilation that I'm curious about. Mm -hmm. Computer Chess is a great movie. Uh, it's a mumblecore movie, uh, which is, means it was made for a shoestring budget, uh, and it's got a lot of talking in it. It's called Mumblecore. And then Eternal Sh Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, which is you know one of the more classical love stories uh, of the last generation or so. So anyway, if I were looking to get inspired to write about... Uh, technology and something, I would probably start with movies that I know have a technological edge to them, like these. These are all sort of, they're headier movies. I like I like those sorts. Uh, I, like, I have an aesthetic sense that kind of lends itself to that, uh, that modality a bit more than maybe, uh, you know, super like action movies, but even the movie like, I don't know, like Sicario, there's a lot of technology uh, to it. Uh, video games and esports, I won't pretend to be super smart on those anymore, but uh, two games that I have enjoyed recently, uh, Cuphead, if you haven't heard of Cuphead, you should at least look at see what it looks like. Um, let's see. Oh, there's no demos on it. Let me find it real quick. I'll pop. Okay, you get the idea, I think, just to watch a little bit of, <laughs> of uh, uh, a video game. But um, that game has a very 1930s aesthetic, and it's also the hardest video game I've ever played in my life. Um, and so I think that there's some sort of dynamic in there that um, what are we asking our, our video games to be or to do um, in ways that maybe we weren't asking them to a uh, generation ago for sure, 10 years ago even. And uh, that can take the form of things like esports. Until Dawn, I don't want to. I don't want this screencast to go on forever. But uh, Until Dawn is a, a pretty interesting game that came out uh, two years ago now, 2015 or 16. But it's basically like a slasher horror movie. But it's a video game, and there's not a whole lot of like button mashing involved in it at all. Uh, I encourage you to at least kind of look into it. It's definitely for grown-ups. It's you know got bad language and violence in it. But it's also uh, it's more like your moral choices kind of come to bear on how the game plays out and you, you start off with a certain number of uh, players 
and your decisions determine how many players survive or don't by the end of uh, of the you know, until dawn when by the time morning comes. Uh, and so I think that was uh, an interesting one. I, I'm always interested in ways that uh, art art forms break with tradition, and uh, I've always I've done that. You know, in the paintings that I like to look at and the movies I watch. Uh, that's where my aesthetic sense goes. Where does your aesthetic sense take you? And uh, if you just tell me about a couple of movies or a couple of video games that you like, I know we can pluck a topic out of it fairly easily. Okay, there's um, just a couple other things to round this out. Uh, YouTubers, uh, I like NerdWriter on YouTube. He does video essays about film, uh, and it helps me to understand why I like the films that I do, and sometimes uh, why I don't like the films that I don't like. But who am I kidding? You know YouTube much better than I do. So. What, what, are, what, what, how do you spend your time on YouTube? Who are your YouTube stars of choice? And again, we can catapult that conversation into uh, a discussion of a completely academically responsible topic. I don't know how many of you listen to uh, podcasts, but I listen to a lot when I'm running. So um, Reply All is a really good one. Invisibilia is, an, is a good one too. Uh, and TED Talks. So if you're looking for a way to, you know, if you're someone who needs uh, a little bit of Time at the gym, you know, to uh, clear your head and think about topics. So maybe a podcast is the way forward for you. Okay, I should call these tech websites. All right. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to be sort of personalized. I, I, in a previous screencast, I made it very clear, like, I want to be a part of your topic selection process. I want to, uh, you know, uh, have a Google Hangout with you or to FaceTime with you or at least to have a protracted email correspondence about what makes, uh, you know, the best topic for you, your best path for success. Um, so anyway, I'm very poorly lit again. Uh, a little late for that, Steve. But okay, so please send me your emails. Let me know how things go.